This is really fascinating stuff. What you're looking at right now is a paralyzed man using his mind in order to create the words that appear on the screen. This revolutionary speech neuroprosthesis research at the University of California, San Francisco, is allowing the gentleman to communicate in complete sentences by translating signals from his brain to the vocal tract and directly onto text on the screen. It's one of several massive leaps in brain science technology that is literally creating a future of potentially infinite possibilities and also concerns about how this technology could be used or misused. Our Kaylee Hartung files this in-depth report on one of the leading creators in this field who at one point became so concerned with its power, he gave up his patent to a university. It was the viral video moment seen around the world. In April, a monkey playing a game of Pong using only its mind with the help of what's called a Neuralink. The device is Elon Musk's latest venture into a fast evolving tech space. Tiny chips that get implanted in the brain. Sounds like something out of the matrix, but this is not a movie. Welcome to the real world. Brain chips are part of a revolutionary field that's been around longer than you think. Is this science fiction? Or is this reality? It is absolutely science fiction that has turned into real science. What Elon Musk did with these monkey trials showing how monkeys with brain chips could control computers with nothing but their minds, the, the first version of this happened in the 60s. Jeff Steibel is an entrepreneur, investor, and brain scientist. He's the former owner of BrainGate, a pioneering brain chip company. Explain in the simplest terms to me what that technology is. When you think of these brain chips, it's actually pretty simple. All we're doing is tapping into that electrical current, reading the language of the mind, sending it to a computer, and the computer interprets that language, converts it, and you can do all kinds of things with it. Really that simple. The chip, more formally known as Brain Computer Interface, or BCI, is the size of a baby aspirin, connected to a larger device called a pedestal that gets surgically attached to the motor cortex. The goal is to profoundly improve the lives of people suffering from paralysis, brain injuries, or other spinal cord injuries by turning their thoughts into actions. The first FDA-approved clinical trial of BrainGate's neural interface system was launched back in 2004. Imagine if you were an individual who could never speak to someone, and for the first time you could type, I love you, to one of your loved ones. Imagine if you couldn't walk, but you could all of a sudden use a wheelchair with nothing but your mind. Imagine if you couldn't use your arms, but for the first time using your mind, you could control a prosthetic to then eat something. Again, for the first time, it's, it's those aha moments uh, that you know, surprise even, even me to this day. Experts believe BCI also has the potential to transform the way humans and computers work alongside each other forever. Companies will have access to brain data, and uh, this is going to fuel a very lucrative um, new data market. Uh, moreover, companies will be able to sell another type of device on top of smartphones, laptops, and so on. Several companies have already moved forward with less invasive wearable versions of BCI technology, aimed at everything from improving focus to controlling prosthetic limbs, even controlling gadgets with the mind. In April, the FDA gave its first ever market authorization for wearable BCI, approving a device that helps stroke patients regain mobility in their arms. French company Nexmind marketing a wearable headband, allowing this man to change the channel through sheer will alone. It currently retails for $399. Experts predict that BCI has the potential to be a $3.85 billion industry by 2027, according to Allied Market Research. But with great promise comes great concerns. You're going to have to share your brain data with private companies. Are you willing to share your brain data only to have a better interaction with your nearby devices? This is the question. What are the other ways it could be used that, that causes pause? The peril of this technology, the risk of this technology is if we push too hard too fast, you can, you can use it for virtually anything. When we go beyond trying to help people who are, who are struggling, uh, paraplegics, quadriplegics, locked in patients, people who can't speak, to improving people who are normally functioning, um, you know, giving you a brain chip as an example, uh, it, it, it's almost downright frightening. In 2020, Steibel decided to donate BrainGate to Tufts University to determine how best it should be used. The university says it's in the early stages of evaluating the technology. Explain to me the thought process in your mind 
for handing this over. We always knew that this served a greater humanitarian purpose. We always said that we wanted to do the right thing here. Despite the fact that I have a background in the brain, I knew just enough to know that it was dangerous to know just enough. We needed smarter minds to be focused on this. Daniel Dennett, one of Stiebel's mentors, is an esteemed bioethicist. The newly established Tufts Consortium on Brain and Cognitive Science is partially named after him. What we're learning is that almost any uh, technology that utilizes remote devices like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi is hackable. And certainly if you're going to have something um, in your brain that is going to uh, control a limb, whether it's your limb or a limb on a, on a, a drone robot of sorts, um, uh, if that's hackable, you want to guard against that, and that's going to be a big issue. Aside from those risks, Stiebel says there will always be great concerns when potentially world-changing inventions enter the fold. Anytime a new technology comes out, whether it's TV, you know, the printing press, uh, you know, the, the wheel, um, Facebook, the internet, they're, they're always perils. Usually, when done right, there's far more good than there is bad. Many experts believe government will need to play a key role in the future of BCI. A lot of people are in favor of this. They think that uh, the only way to push the human kind forward is to merge with machines. Is it something scary? Yes. Uh, are we going to need specific regulations? Yes. Um, are we going to have companies trying to do things that might be illegal? Probably. That's why we need strong regulations. I'm, I'm always cautious about, you know, about attacking technology, uh, but any new technology has perils and pitfalls. What you need are benevolent thinkers trying to determine how best to use it. You if believe we, this technology can do more good. I, I know this technology will do more good. I'm not just an optimist. The glass isn't half full. The glass is full. It's got part water, part oxygen. We can use both of those things to do great things. It, when, it, when it comes to BrainGate and these brain chips, th the, this is going to be so good for so many people. Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.